Welcome to our world news program. Today, we have some exciting stories lined up for you. First, we dive into the fintech world where mainland Chinese companies are making a splash in Hong Kong, aiming to expand into the ASEAN markets. With support from the government and a focus on underserved populations, these firms are ready to revolutionize credit access and more. Next, we shift gears to the tech scene, where TSMC, the giant semiconductor manufacturer, has decided to stop shipments of advanced chips to Chinese customers. This move comes in light of potential violations of U.S. regulations, highlighting the ongoing tensions in the tech industry and the implications for AI development. Lastly, we explore the electric vehicle landscape, as Chinese manufacturers are setting their sights on Africa. With flagship stores and assembly plants popping up, these companies are ready to capitalize on a growing market while sidestepping tariffs from the U.S. and Europe. It's an exciting time for the EV industry. Please continue watching for more detailed content. South China Morning Post reports that mainland Chinese fintech companies are increasingly establishing their headquarters in Hong Kong to tap into the ASEAN markets. A prime example is KN Group, which has set up an 8,000-square-foot office in Taiku Place, employing between 80 to 100 staff. Founded in 2014, the company utilizes AI to analyze consumer behavior data, targeting underserved individuals in the financial sector. Senior Vice President Jiang Xian highlighted the support from the Hong Kong government, which has facilitated local recruitment and collaborations with universities for research projects. With plans to expand into 15 to 20 countries over the next five years, KN Group aims to enhance cooperation between Hong Kong and ASEAN in the fintech domain, leveraging the city's capital and talent pool. New York Times reveals that Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, a leading manufacturer of advanced computer chips, is halting shipments of its cutting-edge chips to China. This decision comes after a chip was inadvertently found in a Huawei processor, raising concerns about compliance with U.S. regulations aimed at preventing sensitive technology from reaching Chinese companies. TSMC's chips are critical for various technologies, including AI systems, and the U.S. government has been actively blocking sales to China to mitigate military risks. As TSMC reviews its orders to ensure compliance with these regulations, it reflects the broader geopolitical tensions surrounding technology and trade between the U.S. and China. South China Morning Post highlights the aggressive expansion of Chinese electric vehicle EV, manufacturers into Africa, as they seek to bypass tariffs and restrictions from the U.S. and Europe. Companies like BAIC Group are establishing assembly plants in Egypt, with plans to produce thousands of EVs annually. This strategic move is supported by Egypt's advantageous location for trade and its commitment to localizing the car industry. As Chinese EV makers face challenges in Western markets, they are increasingly turning to Africa, where demand for electric vehicles is rising, and production costs are lower. The trend underscores a shift in focus as geopolitical rivalries shape the automotive landscape with Chinese companies actively seeking new markets to maintain growth and competitiveness. Nikkei Asia reports on a growing trend among young urbanites in China seeking solace in youth nursing homes, simple rural lodgings designed for relaxation away from the fast-paced city life. In a guesthouse located in Jiangsu province, guests expressed their desire to escape the relentless pressures of urban living, with one woman likening her stay to returning to her childhood home. These retreats, catering primarily to millennials and Generation Z, have surged in popularity as social media buzz around them increases. With affordable rates and a focus on mental well-being, these spaces provide a much-needed respite for young people grappling with the harsh realities of a struggling job market and intense competition. The South China Morning Post highlights the pressing need for comprehensive legislation on the use of robots in Hong Kong, as technology rapidly advances and robots become more prevalent in everyday life. The government is urged to implement a licensing system to ensure consumers are knowledgeable about robot safety and usage, as well as to regulate their appearance to prevent the sexualization of robots. Data security and privacy concerns also need to be addressed through legislation, ensuring that users' information is protected. Public education on robot technology is essential to foster understanding and appropriate use, as the city prepares for the challenges and ethical dilemmas posed by the rise of robotics. Al Jazeera discusses the implications of Donald Trump's return to the presidency for India-US relations, which may face challenges due to Trump's protectionist trade policies and anti-immigrant rhetoric. With India being a significant exporter to the US, experts warn that higher tariffs could negatively impact key Indian industries. However, Prime Minister Modi's personal rapport with Trump may help navigate potential tensions. As both nations share concerns about China's assertiveness in the Asia-Pacific region, their bilateral relationship is expected to grow, 
despite the complexities introduced by Trump's policies. The article emphasizes that while challenges exist, the foundational ties between India and the US are likely to endure, bolstered by Modi's diplomatic approach. South China Morning Post reports that China Merchants Group, CMG, is leading a significant transformation in its port operations, particularly at the port of Shenzhen, by incorporating advanced automation and digital technologies. This modernization effort includes remote-controlled quay cranes and autonomous driving container trucks, significantly enhancing operational efficiency while reducing on-site workforce and security risks. The Mawan Terminal, which underwent renovations starting in 2017, now boasts a self-developed digital management system that has improved efficiency by 30% and cut the number of workers by 80%. With plans to develop world-class smart ports by 2027, CMG's initiatives are a stark contrast to labor struggles in the US where dock workers recently faced a major strike due to fears of job losses from automation. In another piece by South China Morning Post, Hong Kong startups are finding promising opportunities in Saudi Arabia, particularly during the 8th Future Investment Initiative Summit in Riyadh. Kiki Zhang, CFO of robotics company FJ Dynamics, expressed her excitement about the potential for business growth in the country, which is actively diversifying its economy under the Saudi Vision 2030 plan. The summit saw numerous partnerships formed, including a significant $1 billion agreement between the Saudi Public Investment Fund and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Companies like Lenovo are also keen on the Middle Eastern market, further highlighting the region's growing demand for innovative technologies. The resumption of direct flights between Hong Kong and Riyadh is expected to enhance business and cultural exchanges, as Saudi Arabia aims to attract 150 million visitors annually by 2030. Al Jazeera provides a detailed overview of the political climate in Mauritius ahead of its national elections, which are overshadowed by a wiretapping scandal involving high-ranking officials. With about 1 million eligible voters, the election is critical as it marks the 12th national election since the country's independence in 1968. The controversy surrounding leaked recordings has heightened tensions, prompting the government to impose and quickly retract a social media ban. Prime Minister Pravind Kumar Jugnauth, seeking re-election, is navigating allegations of nepotism and corruption while touting economic recovery post-COVID-19. His main challenger, Ram Gulam of the Labour Party, aims to capitalize on the scandal to gain support, despite facing accusations of his own regarding past wiretapping. The election is poised to be a pivotal moment for Mauritius's vibrant democracy, with multiple parties vying for power amid a backdrop of economic challenges and historical grievances. Associated Press, in a shocking incident in eastern Yemen, a soldier from the exiled Yemeni government opened fire on Saudi troops during their exercises, resulting in the deaths of two soldiers and injuries to another. This attack, which occurred in Siyan, is notable as it marks a rare insider assault amidst the ongoing conflict that has persisted for nearly a decade. Despite a fragile ceasefire holding between Saudi Arabia and the Houthi rebels, tensions remain high, with the Houthis celebrating the attack as a sign of impending retribution against foreign troops. The perpetrator, identified as part of the first military region, has prompted local authorities to offer a substantial reward for information leading to his capture, although no clear motive has been established. The region has been a hotbed for various militant activities, including those by al-Qaeda, which has previously operated in Hadramaut. As the war continues to claim countless lives and exacerbate humanitarian crises, the situation remains precarious, marked by ongoing airstrikes and a volatile political landscape. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.